and welcome to the show. It is me, John Park. It's time for JP's product pick of the week. And uh, I am excited to say I got a replacement uh, lavalier mic. So crossing fingers, that was the thing that was going out uh, over the last broadcast. If you were, if you were tuned in last Thursday, I had uh, some microphone or audio problems. Um, so we'll see. We'll find out. Hopefully that was it. Uh, and then I may actually try to go back and repair the other one. But for now, I've got a replacement. So uh, Gremlins possibly worked out. Uh, thanks for, for asking Dave Odessa over in our YouTube chat. Uh, we've also uh, got OG Thinkster. Hello. Uh, thanks for stopping by. And then if you're looking for other chatting uh, opportunities and you're somewhere that doesn't seem to have an active chat like Twitch or Facebook, then stop by our Discord channel if you like. You can get there by going to adafru.it slash discord and then look for this channel here. It is the live broadcast chat channel. Hello, Thin Man, Jim Hendrickson, Todd Bot, Squid.jpg. Uh, thank you for hopping over here for the chat. Uh, hey, Andrew Farnsworth over on YouTube. Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> Andrew says, the child in me wants to say you are muted. All right, I'm keeping a close eye on the VU meter flapping away. I've got two of them now. Uh, hopefully I'll notice if that goes out. Uh, so what's going on here? Well, if you want to get a jump start on things, head over to this URL. That is where today's product pick, this week's product pick is. You can also use a QR code if you want to just aim a phone or a phone camera at that and, uh, and hop over to the site. That will take you to the product page. This show continues to be available to you right inside the product page. It plays right in there. It's embedded in there. Thank you to the product uh, team for uh, making that and a whole bunch of other stuff happen for the show. We appreciate it very much. And before I tell you about this week's product pick, I'm going to jump back just a little bit in time. It's a pretty new product and have Lady Ada tell us all about it. So please take it away, Lady Ada. Okay. This is in stock now. It's coming soon. We put it in stock uh, while we were on uh, proving hiatus. The ESP32 C6 Feather is now in stock. I know some people signed up. Pick one up. Our Feather format now with a chip that does Wi-Fi, BLE, and 802.15.4, um, otherwise known as ZigBee compatibility. It doesn't have native USB. It has like the USB serial converter built in, uh, but it does run Circuit Python. Good Arduino support, although um, Matter interfacing for it is still in progress. You have to use the ESP SDK uh, to do that. Um, Stemic QT port, boot and reset switch, NeoPixel, um, separate uh, low dropout regulator for the NeoPixel and QT port. I think the quiescent current is like 16 microamps check the product page but it's like it's like 20 microamps or less it's very good for low power usage so i think this will be great for home automation um matter sensors because it, of course you can do wi-fi ble or 802.15.4 it's kind of like this wide range of uh, connectivity available um at a very good price the c6 is a, is a great deal compared to the s3 series it's uh, also got a risk 5 core processor um, four megabytes of flash, but no PS RAM. The C6 mini modules don't come with PS RAM. Um, like I said, Arduino and CircuitPython support are looking good for this new All right. part, so it's back in stock. Yes, indeed, that is it. There's my product pick of the week this week. It is the ESP32 C6 Feather. So it is first and foremost a feather. So it has all the conveniences that we love on a feather. It's got USB-C for charging and data. It has a built-in Stemma QT port for I2C sensors and other peripherals to be plugged in. It has the LiPo battery charging and power. So you can plug that in and use LiPo as well as charge it right over the USB-C. And this is a pretty unique chip on here. This is the ESP32C6 which gives us Wi-Fi, gives us BLE, Bluetooth 5, and this has the Zigbee and Threads for Matter uh, radio protocols. Uh, so what are those called? Hold on, I have it right here. That's uh, 802.15.4 is Zigbee. And what makes that interesting is this is a cutting edge board that may be useful if you wanna do development for home automation using Matter. So the Matter standard and thread 
allow you to do some very advanced home automation things that are compatible across a whole bunch of manufacturers. So that's the idea behind this matter stuff, is to be able to do home automation things and communication among IoT gizmos in your home without having to worry about which sort of walled garden you're siloed into. So that's the promise of it. There's a lot of exciting development going on. That said, I'll warn you, this is early days for it. So this is going to be something for you to get if you want to be in on the cutting edge of development for that. Uh, right now, to develop for Matter, you have to use the Espressif toolkit for this. We do, that said, have support for Arduino and CircuitPython. Uh, this chip does not have USB built on, so you can use the um, serial to USB or Wi-Fi or uh, even Bluetooth um, workflows, web workflows, which I'll show off in a second for CircuitPython. Uh, but I just want to stress this is not a grab it and go, ready to, ready to use for matter. This is really early, uh, early development, cutting edge kind of stuff. Uh, so let's first of all jump over to the product page for this. Let me uh, pull that up and there you can see there's the uh, product. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. You can see we've got that on sale during this show only for half price, so $7.48. Pretty great price. Uh, the, like Lamore said, the ESP 32C6 is an inexpensive module, relatively speaking, so we can keep the cost low on the feather. Uh, and this gives you a little bit of the info there. So Zigbee 802.15.4 at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, it also has the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi, as we mentioned. Um, this is a, uh, I think it's 160, yeah, running at 160 megahertz. It's a single core, 32-bit RISC-V processor. Uh, it has four megs of flash on it. There's no PS RAM. Uh, it has all those radios that we mentioned, all of the feather conveniences. And if you take a look, if you scroll down here, you can hop over to this link for the learn guide. So on the learn guide here, uh, there's a overview page, gives you the basic info. There's a pinout page that will tell you all of the pins and what you can use them for. A lot of the usual suspects there. Uh, a mention here of low power use, so this can be used in deep sleep modes and light sleep modes uh, so that you can uh, use it on battery power in a, in a sensor application and get a long life out of it. Uh, a little page about power management. And then there's info here about doing CircuitPython. So you'll install CircuitPython, but then use the web workflow. Uh, since there's not regular USB, you're not going to see a CircuitPy drive show up. And that's how I'm using it here. So uh, if we jump to... This page you can see here, I've got it right there, the Feather ESP32C6 plugged into USB for power. Uh, and I am sending data to it, even though it's not to a CircuitPy drive. And the way I'm doing that is from my browser. So you can see here, I've got code.circuitpython.org. Uh, this is using a USB serial connection in this case, but you also have the option to do it over Wi-Fi uh, once you've set up your settings.toml or over Bluetooth. You can pair it with your computer and program over Bluetooth. Uh, so you can see here in this case, uh, what I've done is I've got a code.py file that is saved to the drive. I'm going to resave that because I just updated this little print statement. And then over on the right side, I can say restart. So it's going to rerun the board. Uh, you can see here it says ESP32 C6 Feather welcomes you. And then I've got it cycling some NeoPixel uh, colors there. If I set this, let's set this blindingly bright just so you can see the change here uh, and restart after saving. You can see I've, I've just updated that over the web workflow. Uh, I can also go and use the file browser. So I am browsing that uh, the, the Feathers uh, memory itself. And if I open up this one called Wi-Fi code, and then I'm going to resave that as code.py. I'll overwrite the existing one. Uh, and then when I hit restart here, uh, this is a little code that goes and, oh, what, what happened there? Let's try rerunning re, re that. Uh, to go onto my network, and, oh, maybe it's not, I might not be finding my network. Okay, I've run into, run into some kind of problem. Let me, let me hit reset and see if we can save from that. So I'm going to reconnect over USB. Okay, this might be this might be the end of the demo here. We'll see. I'm going to try to repair that. 
Connect to device. All right. Restart. Uh, yeah, it's well, it was able to restart, but I've got some some issue. I think I'm just not reaching my uh, my router because I have it pointed at a router that's a little too far away. Uh, so we're getting some sort of a memory error with that. Uh, but uh, when it works, that, that's uh, to show that we have Wi-Fi on there, also have Bluetooth. When we uh, use the web workflow, you actually have the choices right here to try to connect uh, with any of those three methods to talk to the board. Um, so sorry for, for glitches in the demo there, but that's how you know it's live, how you know it's uh, bleeding edge. Um, and let's see, that is the... Uh, CircuitPython web workflow. You can also go and check out our, uh, our Arduino IDE support. Uh, and then you can also use the Espress if, if you're a little more advanced, uh, use their, their development environment to talk to the, to the chip and program it for Matter. Um, let's see. What else? Squid.jpg says, Curse of the Live Demo. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, do I dare? I think I'll leave it alone because otherwise I would have to go and, and uh, sort of secretly edit my TOML file to use a different router that's nearby and, and that could be a disaster. So I'll leave that alone. Uh, so that's the uh, board right there. And like I said, if you head to the product page, you can get 50% uh, off. Bring that back up. Uh, right now we have a, I think we stashed 100 of them before the show, so we should have enough. Uh, maximum of 10 per customer, no resellers allowed. And like I said, you don't need a coupon code or anything. We just set the price to that during the show, and then right at the end, it'll go back to full price. Okay, so we have 91 of them in stock. So uh, if you want to get them, get them before the end of the show. Uh, let's see. I, I can, let me just for, uh, for the sake of possibly torturing myself, I'm going to head back to the IDE page here. Let's see if we can reconnect over the Bluetooth, or rather the USB connection here. And I will, oh, you know what? I don't think I saved that. Okay, yeah, let's just open code.py and I'll, I'll uh, paste some different code there. So if you look at my learn guide here, this is how you would do it. Head to the web workflow page. This actually has a few uh, helpful sketches built right into the page that you can copy and paste in there. So let's see. Where did you go? NeoPixel. Okay, yeah, let's grab NeoPixel. And one of the things I didn't show you here, but it's kind of neat in the web, web workflow is uh, there's the question of, well, how do you put assets on there and libraries? You can actually upload files over, not just saving your code file, but you can upload the library files. So in this example, it shows uh, to download the project bundle, unzip it, and then you can push the whole file uh, folder up to the drive on the Feather, and that will give you the NeoPixel library and a couple other libraries you might need. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to copy that code, and then let's go back over to the IDE page, uh, and I'll just paste into here. Okay, so you can see I'm just importing time board NeoPixel, setting my NeoPixel, setting the brightness, and then setting some uh, colors on there. I can hit save, and then I can also hit save and run. Once it's uh, run one time, we can go to restart. Uh, so now you can see we're back to having our uh, color cycle there instead of that Wi-Fi sketch. So that's the web workflow in a nutshell. Uh, it is similar in a lot of ways to using another IDE, but you don't have to worry about the fact that we don't have the USB drive, uh, CircuitPy drive, to directly talk to. Uh, so let's see. Any questions in the chat? Let me bring up the Discord and I'll check the YouTube. Uh, Raul Gerardo Huertas Paiva says, greetings from Peru. Hello, thanks for joining us. Uh, and Gordy G says, greetings and salutations from the Great White North. Excellent, thanks for joining. Uh, oh, some nice says, one of the benefits of the web workflow is a scrollable REPL. Oh, that's interesting. Let me, uh, let me see if I can try that out. How do you, how do you use that? 
you open up serial, or is it just scrollable after you've, I don't know if I can go directly into the REPL? I should learn about this. Let me bring up that page there. Control C is restarting it. Okay, well, I'll just, oh, there we go. Uh, so how about import board, dir board, and I can scroll it. Hey, that's really cool. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that info, some nice. Very neat. And if I just want to start that again, I'll just hit Control D. Uh, so that was Control C to get to the, to the REPL, Control D to rerun the code on there. Same as saving it, basically. Okay. Uh, I think that will do it. Not a lot to show, so sorry that's a short one today, but hopefully I'll give you some time to, uh, to run over to this URL right here. Take a look at this uh, beauty right there. There's the board you can see. A little silk screen on there gives you all the info. And uh, go order a few and try those out. So with that, I will say that that's my product pick of the week this week. It is the ESP 32 C6 Feather. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been JP's product pick of the week. See you next time.